right then, so I'm back from Manchester, 1 hour 20, a little bit of traffic on the way back, but not too bad. And uh, I managed to lift it out of the car and get it back into the house. So the set on the left is my original MX-7000, the grill missing at the bottom. Just took that off, didn't want to put my finger through it when we brought it back downstairs. Just uh, hooked up my Nomad, that's how I put in RGB SCART. So just to see uh, what it looks like. And I'll be honest with you, it, it doesn't look too bad down here. It's probably because it's quite it's quite light, I don't know, but the picture looks pretty much alright. I mean I still had that, that fuzziness when I first turned it on and the uh, the screen's a little bit wonky on one side. But anyway, moving to the right, this is the new one. Software version 4.7. Now I'll just show you how to get to software version, because normally I, I just thought you could just check it by uh, looking at the sticker. We can actually press a key combination on the remote. So you press menu, zero, zero, go. And there we go, both softwares. I thought my original one was 2.3, but according to that it's two. And then my new one is 4.7. Now, I've hooked up the Nomad to the new one and straight away, the girlfriend turned around and said, it didn't look as good and uh, she's right it does not look as good so um, I'll show you that now right then so that's my nomad now running on the new one the new MX-7000 and the screen is really really washed out but not to worry it's just a, a settings issue so I'll show you that now. So if you go back into TV and press menu, you can you can see the difference, it's night and day. Go down to picture. Now the one on the left, I can't get into some of these settings because it's such an old software version. I've got to bridge two wires at the back to get into, into service mode, but we don't need to go into that anyway. So I've got all the settings anyway I need. So I'm gonna now set it to what my MX 4000s are set at. So brilliance on this is 62. I've actually got 32. So we'll knock that down to 32. Straight away you can see the the, uh, the colour changing. That goes from that to 52 and then contrast 61. Exit that to save it and that looks loads better straight away. I don't know if you can see, but if you look to the right of the picture, the geometry is really far out. Uh, the picture sat to the left. It's quite square, but it's sat to the left. So I'll put in now my geometry settings. So it's back to TV, snow screen, menu, one, one, go. Now there is an error on this. I don't know what that is. Last error 80. All the MX files, all the MX sets I've had, I've never seen an error code, so I need to look up, look up that. So anyway, so RDR set at 40. I'm going to change that to 36. 36. And change that to 39. You can probably see the picture moving as I'm doing this. And these are miles out. Some of these settings. 33. It's always useful to write down the original settings. Brightness 3, color 3, HFQ 26, 55. Use like your horizontal settings. Pam 22. BAM is 30. Now the, these are what I used to use. Well, these are the settings I actually use for my, my 4000, but they probably will, this set will probably will want some tweaking. But I'm sure it will look better than it does. So that's 20, 16, 20, 20, and then that's 48. Just check those again, go through these filters. Back to 
the start. 36, 39. What's the U? Huh, that's wrong. 30, that should be 33. Yeah, I've got, I've got mixed up there. Yeah, so it's always wise to double check it and write them down, like I said. G, C, U is 15, 3, 3, 26, 55, 22, 30, 31, 20, 20 again, 16, 20, 48. Then you just press exit to save those in. Back to AV1, which I've put onto V-tape on the remote. And there we go, we're up and running. Slightly out of the bottom of the picture, just let the uh, demo run, I'll be able to see them a bit clearer. It's filling the screen from what I can see, but it's slightly sat down a little bit at the bottom, but that does look really nice, I've got to admit. It's bright, really bright. And all this is running from, from a Nomad, which is the same hardware as a Mega Drive. RGB scar and all that. So my next step is uh, to get this beast back upstairs. So I need some volunteers. Any volunteers? Yeah, it looks really nice. What I'll do, I'll get it upstairs and then I'll, I'll tweak the geometry because you, you always risk uh, knocking the tube, uh, you know, as careful as you can be trying to lift one of these upstairs. It's got a lot of gubbins inside. But anyway, that's the MX-7000. But literally three days after I put the first video up, I looked on eBay and it, it was just there in Manchester. And it actually came with a nice stand, which I will show. It's not motorized, but it's a very nice stand. Came with the remote. The remote works apart from the screens. The screens broke, you've probably seen that already. But I've now got three remotes, two MX-7000s and two MX-4000s. A motorized stand for the MX-4000 and a manual stand for the MX-7000. So I've pretty much turned into a B&O center. Right then, for your viewing pleasure, we've got Sonic 2 times 2 MX-7000 on the left, MX-7000 on the right. Nomad on the new one on the right, 60 hertz, and then Mega Drive 2, Power Mega Drive 2, playing on the original MX-7000 on the left. Now, picture-wise, it's it's better on the right, I've got to admit. To the naked eye, it's better. Slightly brighter, slightly more vibrant. You're not going to see this on camera. You never do when you're trying to film a CRT. However, when I had the MX-7000 upstairs, I always thought it was darker. And in fact, it was, because uh, that's because I slipped up. I failed to remember that I've actually split output number two from my SCART splitter through um, a split SCART lead. So one side runs to the Saturn scaler, the other side runs to the MX-7000. That's why it's dark. Um, it must be losing some kind of signal quality or whatever through the SCART lead, hence why it's dark. Been upstairs this morning and I've hardwired straight from output number two with a conventional SCART lead going into the MX-4000, my new one. Sorry, this is getting confusing. There's far too many, far too many BNO TVs. But basically it's fine. Picture-wise, brightness-wise, it's, it's bang on. It's bang on. Um, so what am I left with? I'm left with another MX-7000, however it's, it is a better picture, it's a lot newer, I've got another remote, I can access the service menu through the remote instead of bridging the wires at the back, and um, yeah you can never have too many CRTs can you, you can never have too many. So there's probably not a lot wrong with the one on the left, the original one, I've still got that fuzziness when I first turn it on, so it's probably I you know, it's wanting a repair, maybe a dry solder joint or a cap replacement and the, geomet the geometry is slightly out. Um, I know when I first got it and I set it up it will bang on. So whether the tube's going, but that could be down to the, you know, the capacitor issue, I, I don't know. But um, there's probably not a lot wrong with it. So I'm going to stick it up for sale, see what happens. 
Then in the meantime, I'm gonna lug my new one upstairs, tweak that a little bit more with the geometry. But it, it means we're back up and running with uh, twin BNO action. And we've got a spare MX4000. So, we finally got it upstairs. It's been about two weeks now since I last did uh, any filming, and I've uh, just been waiting for some help really, just to get it upstairs because it's a uh, you know it's an heavy old unit. It's probably about 40, 45 kilograms. It's probably not the weight that's the problem. It's the um, the size of the hatch. It's coming up because I'm, I'm up here in the loft, and it's a bit awkward to carry up the ladder. It took um, it took three hours to get it up, but we needed a two bar. Got it up here. And I've, uh, I've plonked it back in its uh, original place. Um, I've made use of the storage behind. I've put my original MX4000. I've stuck that behind the cabinet. Big thanks to Custardo because he gave me a bit of a top tip. Uh, he told me to um, get some mouse mats, uh, shiny mouse mats. Well, I've not got mouse mats. I've got um, uh, floor, floor tiles from Poundland. Uh, shiny side down, stuck them underneath the TV and I've slid the MX4000 down behind the cabinet, filled the rest up with a few boxes. I've had a bit of a rejig behind here by, uh, you know, I've made use of this uh, this opening because it's a lot easier than trying to get through that gap behind me, believe me. And uh, we've changed some, changed some scart leads around, had a bit of a tidy up. And uh, yeah, plonked this, plonked this in place myself the other night. Uh, it's a bit awkward because you've got this beam you see, you've got to like angle it in and then angle it back up but yeah it's um it's sat there nice and lovely um a little bit more geometry needed but i will get around to that um I'm, I'm happy with the brightness levels very happy now and um i got rid of that old scar like i said earlier on the old the old split scar that he was causing the dim picture so the one i sold wasn't actually that bad it's now gone it's now been sold so apart from when you first turned it on, you, you've got that um, uh, you know dodgy picture, but I think that was just capacitor issue. But it, it, it could last another 18, 18 months really, two years, three years, whatever. So yeah, I'm happy. Twin being no action, back up and running up here in the, uh, the games room. So yeah, very happy. So I would recommend picking one up. Uh, MX7000, MX4000, try and go for a, a later software number, that's 4.7, that's 4.3, um, came with a remote, um, not got the remote near me, so I've now got three, three of these remotes, I mean these remotes on their own for about anything from 20 to 80 pound, purely for the remote, and without the remote, these TVs, more or less impossible to work, I mean you can get like an aftermarket one, which my original one came with, but um, no, you're better off. You do track one down. Try and get the remote, guys. Top tip there. So that is about it from me. Uh, so until next time, I'll see you there on Cocker. See you there on.